Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today I want to take a little look at uh, something I kind of stumbled across watching some, uh, some college film the other day. I want to look at uh, 12 personnel with the Y and the H both off and the things that you can do uh, from that personnel package. All right, so make sure you check out some of our sponsors, uh, partners, Dome Hats is the headwear company that we use uh, with Play Fest Football and at the school that I'm currently at. This is one of my uh, trucker mesh Rydell Dome Hats. Absolutely love it. All right, if you want to build your own hat, if you like custom, make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods, company I use for coaching shirts, spirit packs. Uh, our uniforms are distributed through Baker Sporting Goods. Uh, so if you need anything for your team, if you need anything for your fans, if you need anything for your staff, get it all in one place. Check out Baker Sporting Goods. Been doing it since 1997. Uh, I like the fact that it's quality and consistent sales reps. I don't have uh, three different sales reps coming in my office in one year. Just Play Football, which is uh, digital software I use if I'm going to di diagram plays. If I'm going to speak at um, a clinic, I'm going to use uh, their software. If I'm going to do anything for webinars or for my Patreon site, I'm going to use their software. So make sure you check out Just Play. More than just a play, uh, playbook software, it is an educational tool that helps your players uh, understand your offense and your defense and your game plans uh, a little bit better. So make sure you check out Just Play Game Strat, sideline replay system we use. We're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system. Make, out, uh, make sure you check out Game Strat. Guarantee you won't be disappointed. Different USA, the ultimate striking machine. Put one in your weight room, put one out on the field, get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Elbows in, thumbs up, how to strike, how to leverage, what you need to do to build power and become a good striker. High and tight ball security training aid that we use. Uh, it, it comes with an instant auditory feedback. The ball will beat when it's held in the right position. So if you have the ball held in the proper position with the proper points of pressure, the players will hear an auditory beat immediately if they know when they hear that beat that's where the ball needs to be that's where the pressure needs to be if they do not hear that beat they know that they're doing something wrong all right and stand perfect is the training aid we use uh, to help our younger players build consistent and reliable stances we can get way more reps without uh, using some of the buzzwords we don't have to talk about heel toes six inches four inches move this foot back move that foot up we put the stand perfects down where we think they ought to be for the stance that we want to teach at each position we roll kids in and out and say, hey, put your feet in. All right, put your left hand on the ground. Put your feet in. Put your right hand on the ground. If you're a lineman, uh, defensive lineman, maybe you put your feet in. Put both hands on the ground. Um, but uh, it, it allows us to get more reps without kind of having to say that old school, hey, take your back foot and move it over here. Move it back. Heel, toe, in step. So it's a great training aid for uh, multiple sports. You can use it in baseball, softball, golf. Uh, there's multiple ways to use it. I think it's an awesome training aid, so make sure you check out Stand Perfect. So the other day I was watching, uh, I was actually watching some defensive film, um, and I was looking at some, some different things, and I came across uh, Oklahoma State doing it a little bit, and some other people that I saw, you know, a 12 personnel set, but they had both the Y and the H or the Y and the F or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they were both off the line of scrimmage. Um, and Obviously, in this set, this looks so familiar to, you know, people are going to say, oh, that's just the old, you know, basic double wing flex bone set. And to me, that's why uh, offenses or systems are so much more than just the formations themselves because, you know, a one back 12 personnel team, if I were to put these two tight ends on the ball and take these two X and Z off, it would look remotely different. As soon as I take that Y and the H or whatever you call, you know, the Y and the F or whatever you call that second tight end uh, on your team, when I take those guys and I pull them off, all of a sudden it looks like that old-fashioned double wing flex bone set. Um, now the reason I like it is because when, it's ba when you're balanced up two by two like this and you are adding the potential three-man surface, as an even front or a 4-2-5 team, it would always give us a little bit of trouble because we had to figure out where we wanted to put our extra nickel or our overhang player. Obviously, we could play quarters or any style of defense we wanted to that side. All right, But then to the other side, if we have an inside backer that's a B-gap player, all right, and they're giving us a tight end uh, flanker type of spread or alignment, now we have to be careful with what we're doing. We can't really play quarters here because the will would be first to the flat, so I would have to move the will out and almost bump the mic if I wanted to play quarters there. Now versus that three-man surface to each side, I think I'm a little bit light in the box. 
All right, if I leave the wheel in there, I'm forced to either maybe into the boundary I can get away with playing cover two. Uh, maybe if the splits were good enough, you could get away with playing uh, palms or two read. But again, what is your run support going to be to that side? So more often than not, you see teams that end up locking it man to man. And they just play that safety real aggressively. They nail it, whatever you want to call it. They play that safety real aggressive on that tight end. So if he's in the run blocking scheme, all right, if he's in the run blocking scheme, then that safety's got to get down and kind of kind of be extra, all right? So what ends up happening, though, is for me, the thing that I like is when the Y and the H are off, I feel like they can do so many other things. They can go behind. They can trade. They can motion, all right? I feel like... There's so many things they could do. You could use them as backside zip players. You could insert them. All right. So to me, uh, you know, getting more into the, the the 11 and 12 personnel, 21 personnel tight end world, I'm really the more and more I look at it, I'm falling in love with playing that Y or that H off the ball because there's so many more things that you can do with them. Now, I know that there's going to be times where you want to create that true hard three-man surface. I know the double teams and, and the techniques for true offensive line guys. Uh, I know it's probably easier to get all those things done uh, with that tight end up there. But to me, the, the, the multiplicity of having him back here allows me to be able to do so many things. Like I said, trade, shift, motion, you know, get yourself to a situation where maybe you end up with both of them on the same side. And now you've got almost a, you know, a, a set that is the Y and the F on the same side, right? If you compress this guy down, now maybe you get yourself, this is where I would put him on. If I were to compress, that's where I would put him on. And maybe now you get yourself into a situation where you get that bunch look. You know, so, so many cool things you can do. Um, and obviously as a formation, you can line them up wherever you want. So having them off the ball doesn't really affect what you could do with formations because, you know, with a formation, you can line them up wherever you want them to. Having them off the ball to me affects what you can do with them uh, pre-snap as far as shifting, trading, and then even post-snap as far as inserting him. You know, you can fold something uh, with a tackle out and a tight end under, but when he's off, now you get that ability to kind of zip them backside, insert them, wham or trap somebody. You know, so now you're looking at, at schemes even from a base, if you look at it from a base, uh, you know, from a, um, a base gap scenario, right? And let's just say we want it to run power, all right, and, and we want it to run normal power and get back and block that and hinge and seal that, right? And then depending on what this seven was doing, okay, uh, now we can either get this block down or we can try and dig it out, get our puller up here. Well, now the beauty of this, because this is a, a pretty good athlete, you may have a chance to get him over there with it. So you may be able to go you know, GF or, or OF power, all right, with, with an extra puller getting another guy to the front side, depending on how good of an athlete this is, all right, from that balance set. Um, when you look at it from a, you know, from a counter or a gap standpoint, if you brought them both to the same side, okay, if you brought them both to the same side like that, and now you want it to run, all right, some type of counter play, so now you want it to go block back there, block there, double that, and get back there. So we want it to go pull, kick, wrap. Well, now, if, if depending on how they align, we might be able to get the other tight end with us, okay? And now we end up with, you know, something that looks like, all right, an OFY counter. All right, and I know people that have run this, a couple of buddies of mine that I've talked to have run this before. Uh, it gets you the ability to add that extra puller. You know, so for years, we used to, for years, I used to have a set that was a three-back set, all right, and again, we got it, I was watching Oklahoma State back in the day, and, you know, we used to have a set, and, and originally Green Bay was doing it some, and we actually called the set Packers, but we used to have to, a three-back set that looked like that, and we would use the two sniffers as extra pullers, extra guys getting involved in our gap scheme, and there were times where we would make this, like, you know, just true full gap scheme, all right, so we would, there were times where we would, you know, I know people f cringe when you say the word duo, all right, but there were times where we would just full gap stuff, and 
we would just full gap everything out. We'd use one guy to kick and one guy to wrap, and we were doing things like that in a full gap scheme, okay? And then obviously, like I just showed on power counter, you can get an extra guy, all right? But to me, what, what I'm starting to like even more, I guess because I don't like seeing it so much on defense, but when you start putting these guys in positions where they're vertical threats, all right, and they're in a position where now, you know, now you've got that pin-pull theory, okay, to where, you know, now all of a sudden we can get ourselves running some buck type stuff, okay, where we can get ourselves running some buck type stuff where, you know, it's pin, pin, all right, uh, maybe, probably wouldn't, wouldn't crack that from there, so we're going to lose a little bit of, of that theory there, all right, but you know, get one guard out, get a second guard out, and now we might even be able to go with, you know, some type of inside fake. Depending on the personnel, we could bring the other back, or the other Y or F, depending on, on the personnel, if he's a decent ball carrier, maybe he, we could bring him in the buck game, okay? Maybe we could just line up the back over here, all right, and now maybe we can go buck and maybe have some type of pop or some type of deal on the backside where now we got buck and a route to that tight end on the backside. All right, so obviously with, with them there, that gives you the pin and pull theories. And now, to me, the beauty is now you get kind of the pin and pull theories on both sides because now, all right, now I've got them on both sides, so obviously I can get that pin, all right, and then determining on what I would want to do or what your rules are with a front side, uh, with a front side A gap player. Obviously here, all right, obviously here, if you have a front side A-gap player and you don't feel like the center can cut it off, then you could leave him in, all right, work the center back. This guy with an open B-gap, all right, now with an open B-gap, he has a chance to possibly get to backer there, and now you get that guard out in front. So again, don't like it as much to the weak side, depending on what the shades are, but because you have that tight end out there, you give yourself the pin-pull theory. You give yourself the ability to do those types of things. All right? I also like the fact that right away in, in your passing game, okay, right away in the passing game, four verticals, obvious threat right now, right? So four verticals with great landmarks. All right, so you, you still have two guys that can work the hash marks. You still have two outside guys that can work the seams. So you, right away you get into, okay, into the four vertical world. I think you still have... Very simply, you still have snag, corner, flat, maybe levels on the backside. Okay, so I think because it's balanced and it's two by two, I think you still have so many great things that you can do. All right, if you're a drive team, you know, if you're a drive team, I think you have flanker drive. So I think you have that with flanker drive. Backside, maybe you can get a post over the top and then some type of vertical choice if you get one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. Okay, so I think you can get yourself to a position where you have flanker drive, you still have it in, you can release the back wherever you want to the drive, away from the drive. Now you can actually get with this number two a post over the top. If you were more of a, a shallow type team, all right, I think it's very easy to still get to shallow. All right, so if you're a shallow type team, I think, or a, a kind of a Mills look, I think you can get post over dig. Shallow comes from this side here. Backside, you can run curl or maybe even a hunt route. Again, do whatever you want with the back. Release the back, all right, to the side of the shallow, uh, to the side the shallow is going. I, I still think within your passing concepts, you have all the things that you want, all right, because you're balanced two by two. And even more so, the funky deal now is when you can compress the outside receivers, all right, and now you get in these little bunch looks, all right, which now opens itself up for waggles and some different things. And, you know, how's the, how's the defense going to handle these types of looks, all right, when you get in these kind of compressed bunch looks, all right, now obviously something like this opens itself beautifully to things like mesh, all right, so get him there, all right, maybe high mesh that guy, big spot there, low mesh him, push the back, and now we can get ourselves where we're at maybe one, two, three, 
big spot four, back to mesh five. All right, so being able to then compress that set gives you, you know, passing game issues or passing passing game uh, things that, that can give the defense issues when you start to get compressed. Obviously, in the run game, everybody loves compressed sets. Everybody loves doing things from compressed sets. I just get, all right, a little bit more excited when I see this type of set with Y and F off, all right, and, and, or Y and H off. And then again, when you look at this compressed set, we talked about the ability to go with one of them on, one of them off, and now you get into that, now you get into that kind of bunch look. Y, that's F or H, all right, that's Z, X. This is the look that you see a lot of duo out of, all right, a lot of great things you'll get, all right, a lot of great boots out of this. So that's that look that you start to see where I would want the Y on, and now I would compress the Z and the F to get into that bunch look, okay? But in the normal set, I like it a little bit better. All right, again, for me, this is an H, not an F. All right, I like it better compressed when Y and H are off. All right, I like the ability to put Y and H off on the same side. I like that better because I think there's more things that those players can do. Uh, depending on the body type, depending on um, depending on on the speed and the athletic ability and the blocking ability of those guys. So, um, just something to kind of take a look at. Obviously, not revolutionary. Twelve personnel has been around for a long time, uh, but the idea that uh, twelve personnel with with guys off playing more hybrid tight ends um, or hybrid sniffers or, or fullbacks or whatever you want to call them. Uh, just the idea that you can run more things, I think, with those guys off, uh, give the defense that balance two-by-two two look. Uh, they can't really declare a strength. They've got to declare it to the field. If the ball's in the middle of the field, it's a great set uh, because now you can really work away from the extra defender or the nickel. I think, uh, I think the, to me, the odd stuff is where uh, defenses are, are benefiting with some of the stuff they're doing because, to me, the odd stuff – sets itself up or lends itself a little bit better to this, you know, because now as an odd front team, you could just play base odd stuff, all right, and now you have two outside backers to each side, all right, and now, to me, I think you can just go ahead and play quarters to each side, just as a base, and you've got everything covered, all right, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of a lighter box, you know, with, with a five-man box, obviously, you could look at possibly playing a back front where you play a full ride to the side of the back. I'd be careful of that just because of the down block of the full ride and the angle on the mic with the Y. But if you were a base odd team, I just think 3-4 uh, personnel, it, it suits itself better to 12 personnel. If you were looking for a matchup and you said, all right, well, I like 12 personnel. Well, I like 3-4 personnel if it's base 2-2-12 two two, because now I feel like I can sit in quarters both sides, I got flat defenders to both sides. I can handle the wheel of two, all right? I can I can have a D-gap force player. I've got an extra body getting ready to fit. So I like those things. I like the 3-4 package a little bit uh, better towards that 12 personnel, and I think Odd is uh, a little bit better suited to handle that. But uh, I appreciate what you guys do for PlayFast. Remember, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you make sure you turn on your notifications so you know every time we do a video, every time I go on YouTube Live, all right, always leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Don't be afraid to leave a thumbs down. All right, it's your opinion. Uh, you're entitled to your opinion. If you want to do a platform like this, you have to be able to accept the fact that there's going to be people that don't like certain things, but it helps me understand what the audience likes, what the audience doesn't like. As always, leave a comment. If the comment uh, pertains to football and I see it on my end, uh, I always try to respond. If it's something about a video, I will try and do uh, the video justice to the best of my ability. So. As always, subscribe, turn notifications on, thumbs up, thumbs down, and leave comments, and I'll get back to you. All right? I appreciate everything you guys do for PlayFast. Hopefully your summer's going well. We're running out of time, only about three weeks until we get fully into the grind again, so enjoy those last couple weeks. Hopefully you had a great holiday weekend. Uh, hopefully the tropical storm stayed somewhat safe for you, and you only got uh, some wind and some rain like we got, um, and, uh, and you're able to get, get back out. If you're in the Northeast, you're able to get back out tomorrow and do the things you want to do. So... Again, appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Thanks for watching. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I'll see you guys next time.